I got it! When I first heard about Dave being trapped in a maze. One, two, three, four! I built a labyrinth. Can you believe it? Dave is trapped in a cardboard maze in his living room and he can't get out. Welcome to Dave Made a Minute, the podcast where a whole bunch of us are exploring the film Dave Made a Maze one minute at a time. The twist. Many of the participants have never seen the film. Some don't even know what film they're sampling. They get their minutes and they tackle them as they see fit. Here's your host from the Groundhog Day Project and Michael Myers Minute, Robert Black. Minute 15, Annie's preparation montage comes to an end. And everyone but the hobo head inside. The maze is indeed bigger on the inside. God! Oh, is it bigger? Uh, yes. On the inside. Look, we need to concentrate. There it is. Yeah, I know where you're going with this, but I need you to calm down. On the outside? Oh, you certainly grasp the essentials. My entire understanding of physical space has been transformed! Three-dimensional Euclidean geometry has been torn up, thrown in the air, and slapped to death by grasp! The universal constants of physical reality has been changed forever. A production note from the commentary track. This entryway just inside the maze was the first part of the maze to be built. And to note on something that this chaotic format probably won't catch, earlier in the film, the enter sign at the front of the maze was white. Now, as most of our characters go to enter it, the enter sign has turned green. To tackle Minute 15, we have Sean German and Dave Pallas of Groundhog Minute, along with James Costa of Holby Costa. You come home, there's a giant maze in your living room. You're like, what the? There's a giant maze in my living room. I've heard of people rearranging the furniture, but this is wackadoodle crazy. This doesn't make any sense. The problem? The problem is to my second. It's like a fucking cocktail party in here. I get a few words from you before you go. All right, boys and girls, lace up your shoes. We're going in the maze. It's minute 15 of Dave Makes a Maze, Minute or the Robert Black Mystery Maze Project. Whatever the title of this is, title pending. Yeah, can we go in the maze now? <sighs> We're going to. We just, we just got to get the intro done first, Sean. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm as, I'm, I'm, I'm as excited as Jane is. I'm one of your guest <laughs> hosts slash guests, guests and hosts, Dave. Uh, with me is Sean German and Hello. our good buddy JD. What's up, guys? How's it going? Good. All right. So we are back, minute fifteen of this uh, mysterious maze film. Yeah. And, and yeah. minute fifteen opens with a montage. Yes. Yeah. It's a very. It was very like. Uh, there's a lot of information in this in this one minute. Uh, the the whole and uh, just have to say, just have to cut through everything. Uh, outstanding star of this minute, the homeless man. Yes. <laughs> yeah, our hobo. Yeah. He's a man after my own heart. Everybody wants to do something. I just turn around, go to the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have literally in my notes, I have two lines. This is the best minute ever. And then the next line, Ralph hits the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, maybe they got some, uh, some microwave flapjacks. Yeah. <laughs> There's a line, he, his line in the minute, I think it's his minute, where he goes, I'll, I'll be right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be ready. He, well, you know, he's, he's like the command center. He's holding down the fort. Yeah, no, I think I'll he's just a smart man. He's literally not sitting on cardboard outside. So any, <laughs> anything is better than being homeless at this point. Yeah. yeah. He's like, no one's kicked me out, so I'm going to stay. Yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm going to let it ride. So, yeah, like, minute 15. I mean, that's, I mean, that is essentially what our summary is, is that we have a montage of Annie getting ready to go in. They are friends who Dave doesn't want in the maze want desperately to get in the maze uh yes our hobo is more than happy to just kind of hold down the literal uh <laughs> or the outside of the fort and uh and yeah and then and we show uh i believe it's harry uh harry and his crew finally uh show up and they are going to document all of this yeah so now we get to see where i was so for the listeners you um you may remember us from minute 12 i was kind of confused when they talk about the crew because we didn't we didn't see the crew in that minute i thought it was like a metaphorical crew that uh G- gordon might have been talking about greg and Bryn, kind of yeah. like hey they're our crew but no now we see no he's talking about an actual film crew that we that we get to see here and so we have we have a th- we have a triple shot of a montage 
It looks like Annie is checking out if a glow stick works. She is filling up a thermos of water, I believe, and, and then <laughs> ziplocking a sandwich. Yeah, and I, very... I believe I believe that the 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 latter two are you know the first one's navigation of you know light stick because mm-hmm. you can't bring obviously you can't bring a, a torch. Can't bring a torch or a lantern in, and that is just dangerous to bring into a floor. No, yeah, you don't want fire in the cardboard. And maybe she's got flashlights, but you know the, the glow sticks will also be useful. And then, yeah, the, the water in the sand, just maybe for Dave, because I don't know if they got the pizza to him, you know? Yeah, well, here's here's what I was thinking. First, is that, that three-set montage, very Breaking Bad. And, yeah, and yeah. And the second part is, what if you drop the glow stick down one of the, the chimney? Will that be a full-size glow stick now in this in this maze? Yeah, see, that's okay. Wow, yeah. I, I was going to bring this up in a minute, but since Jay totally, totally is, is already there, um, this reminds me of this book, uh, House of Leaves. Mm-hmm. And it's a very, I think it's, I think you try to want to remake it into a movie or a TV show. It's kind of hard because it's, it's, it's meta in the sense is that the book, the physical book, you open it up, it is a report of a guy who is transcribing a movie. And then there's a, and then you then you flash out to a guy and who is cleaning out a ho- a motel, finds some old man, finds finds these documents. So it's like this, so you have a guy finding a guy's notes that he's transcribing about a movie. Like that's how this book is, and the movie. So we go all the way down those Inception layers. The movie is essentially a family in a house. A door opens up and. What's odd is that the door leads to a hallway in the house, and if you measure the hallway, it's it's wider than the house. So the so it's like mm. yeah, exactly. It starts stretching yeah. like what you know as time and space, and eventually it turns into a labyrinth that like people go in and they get lost and they hear weird noises and stuff and like, but it's all within this hallway, this door. You know, like wait, in the middle of this house, there's a labyrinth. That's the vibe now I'm getting with that, where it's just like, looks like a cute little 4x4 squared labyrinth of cardboard, but no, it's, it is an actual, it's an actual f- full grown, uh, you know, uh, Egyptian, you know, a tomb. Yeah. Have you guys, have you guys seen, uh, Beetlejuice, the movie? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. So here's what, here's what that, that when they get in the end of the minute, when they get in there and they're looking around. It looks like that Beetlejuice model town where everything was hand carved, everything. Oh yeah, when right. they go into the town, right? They go into. They have the the original owner has the the whole town up in his attic, like the miniature version of it. And they they somehow they shrink down. They're in that town. That's kind of what it reminds me of. That's what it reminds me of. So yeah, interesting. Uh, yeah. Okay. Wow. Well, so I didn't. I hadn't made that connection, but I definitely see it now that you mention it. And it definitely, it plays with size and dimension in a similar way. One thing I, I did notice about kind of just taking that one step further. One one thing I've noticed about these minutes in this movie is it's it's like a collage of scenes from a lot of different movies. Um, in particular, f- from this minute, when they're going in... So all the friends are starting to go into the maze, and the camera crew's there. And I, I don't know. I didn't. I guess it's Harry, the um, the one guy's like, "Oh, don't look at the camera! Don't look at the camera!" It made me think of that scene from Apocalypse Now, when they've got the documentary team kind of filming the soldiers, and the soldiers are all looking at the camera, and then the guy's like, "Oh, don't look at the camera! You know, go, you know, pretend you're fighting like you're fighting." Yeah. So that, you know, that kind of that's another movie that this scene or this minute made me think of. And I think there's there's a lot of that that people are going to see in other minutes. Yeah. That is just like a lot of different scenes kind of put together in this unique way to make make a whole new movie. I I think and I'm glad and I'm glad to add on to your point about the documentary crew is a saving grace for this scene is like they don't pull out their cell phones and they have found footage scenes in the movie. You know, it's it's the documentary oh. crew. You yes. Know? So I mean, if they did that, like I, I think taking that from like the found footage movies, like hard, like the mystery, and you know, you don't know what's going on, and people are using that found footage, mm-hmm. like that takes away that that silliness of that style of movie. So that's that's pretty cool. Mm. 
Um, yeah, yeah, I definitely agree. Yeah, thank thank goodness. I'm not a big fan of the the found footage genre, so I like yeah that they don't do that here. Uh, I I got a couple notes on second five, second six, second five. I definitely know where JD got the the Breaking Bad reference. I forgot. And he pulls out that box cutter, and I'm so hoping that box cutter gets used in this film. It's not, not going to be used like in Breaking Bad. <laughs> oh yeah, I saw the great box cutter. I was like, oh, break there it is, there it is, Breaking box Bad, cutter. right there. Yeah. Well, uh, and it's it's yellow, which is also because they would ha- when they would um, when they were doing the thing where they were cooking in houses that were tented for bug spraying. Yeah, and they had those yellow suits. So there's, that's a definite Breaking Bad reference there, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's such a stretch i was just talking about how the montage is very bad <laughs> That's all. and you guys are straight you the, you know you're gonna get a nobel prize in movie theory just no, stretch, you, stretching these yeah if i if, and, and if i can interrupt just quick can i back up yeah i know you're on, i know you're on second five days second five no actually i was on second six i need yeah. to be on second five now because Dave, if you could got... stop if you could stop going to second six okay we need to be <laughs> well, on no, second I... four at least well i have yeah I have, well i have a question with second three okay before we even get there let's oh, stop, living, stop living in the past okay? <laughs> I'm, 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 yeah, I got, I, you know, I've been meeting with a therapist. I'm trying to work my way through it. I'm still stuck. <laughs> I'm stuck back in in second three. I just can't get over it. But I, I just quick question. Yeah, who, who is this guy? Are we? Do, do we know who this guy is? The script later, I think, says his name is Leonard. But I will tell you that I want no part of it. I'm glad he's leaving. I'll, okay. However, his the like, blue sweater guy. Yeah, because Harry clearly blue doesn't Leonard. want him in the documentary. Cl- right. Harry doesn't want him here. The, the fact that he's got his, his head's down, like pinching the bridge of his like, nose. Oh no, not this guy. Yeah, yeah. It's it. It is like where the one guy is like Kramer, like we mentioned in minute thirteen, where it's yeah. like the, you know neighbor. This guy is like Newman. He's the oh, Newman, Newman of of this of this uh, movie. Yeah, Leonard. Yeah. <laughs> He's like the neighbor who's always popping over, like, "Hey guys, what are you doing?" The neighbor, you, but the neighbor one you don't want to pop over, yeah. Because I don't think he has any lines. He just kind of pops in, and then everyone gives him. They roll their eyes and give him a look, and then he leaves. Yeah. But then yeah. he keeps coming back. It's like, he... uh, have you guys seen Game Night? Oh, Game Night, yes. yeah, yeah, Game Night. So, uh, three bags of Tostitos. Yeah, buy one get two free. Yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, like he's the neighbor that they don't want over. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we definitely don't want you in this maze right now. Like, we don't want the. We don't want Greg and Bryn eating and everything pizza with coffee. We definitely don't want them in. And we definitely don't want you in. Yeah. Seriously, why, Andy? I don't like that Andy had a bought an everything pizza for these people. She should just bought plain or maybe oh, yeah. like one topping at most. Yeah. So back back to second five. I totally called it back in minute twelve. I told you. Yeah. Was it Greg and Brynn? They're going to be eating the pizza. Right. Yeah. They're the only ones. Notice it. No one else Greg is like eating the pizza. No one's like sitting down and no. Uh, yeah. No. They're the people that like everybody. You invite everybody over. Everybody throws in for pizza. And they're like, nah, we're not going to eat any. And then they're like, well, if there's an extra slice. And you're like, God damn it. I knew it. You know? Yeah. I knew you yep, to do we this. We knew it. We knew I, it. I, I, they, I was saving those two slices <laughs> for tomorrow for lunch. Yeah. And, and you're right. That is kind of odd. Usually if you've got a lot of different people. You do plain, you do pepperoni. That's kind of lowest common denominator stuff. Maybe that was part of the plan. It's like, listen, we're going to get in everything. And there's no way these people are going to eat it. And then they're like, yeah. Because I don't know. Is there like. I see look, what I believe is pepperoni because there's definitely red spots. So I'm going to say pepperoni. Then I see gray spots. So I'm going to say gray and white spots. That's onions. That's that's mushrooms. I see green spots. Mushrooms. That's probably either going to be broccoli or green peppers. I was thinking peppers, and I I think I see some. Is it black olives? Could be yeah. black olives too. Yeah. See, yeah. but those people, and you know, not the typecast, but those people, I look at and I go, <laughs> I'm going to get meat. They're not going to eat it. You know? so. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah, what they'll do is they'll they'll take the pepperoni off and then they'll complain about like oh what if this is something and you're like oh my god I don't and never wanted you to eat the pizza you said you were going to eat the pizza why are you bring up the pizza right now yeah. Greg and Brent you are the worst yeah. <laughs> let's order a pizza they're drinking coffee at one p.m. come on guys yeah. Ugh, yeah god yeah coffee yeah coffee pizza yikes get out of here uh all right so we I, I I wanted to get them out yeah we had the box cutter uh oh beautiful shot at second eight of that hobo. Just, just <laughs> candid, candid. Oh, yeah. me? Oh, I, I uh, yeah. just ordered it. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> he knows, and I think I think he knows that everyone's so excited going into this. He knows he's going to have the house alone soon. Yeah. Right. He, he I, off off camera. He's going through drawers. He's stealing jewelry, <laughs> deodorant. He's shaving. He's trying to get a job. He lives there now. He might even crush. I don't know. This, uh, minute twenty seven. He might crush the whole thing. Live there. Take right. over their lives. Right. He'll uh, just claim squatters' rights. I live here now. He'll get the locks changed. Like this is this guy's been around. This is not the first cardboard labyrinth this guy's been involved <laughs> with. He knows how things go. Yeah. He's yeah. like everyone's gonna disappear, and I'm gonna have the place to myself in, in a little while. He's thrown it in the dumpster. <laughs> so second second ten, we probably get our best look at probably what's going to be our cast for the rest of the film. I mean, we told we told Leonard in the sweater to get out. Right, but outside of that, like this is probably going to be a main cast. In fact, listen, if this was a horror film, I would yeah, I'd be like, all right, who's going to get killed? Who's going to get slashed? Like, how far are the finished tourists going to make it? You know, right. Well, right. there's in, in second ten, there's ten people, so nine people are going into the maze. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. Yeah, yeah. So oh, I hopefully... think, well, Harry's in the back. Well, Harry's oh, behind eleven. Yeah, Harry's behind oh. Jane, I believe, in the in the bright clothes. Well, yeah, you can barely see. So oh, no, for the Harry's, crew, wait, no, Harry's. I'm sorry, Harry's behind Bryn. Bryn, Harry's he behind be, Bryn. There's the the cameraman, cameraman is behind Jane. You can yeah. see the camera in his hands. Yeah. Okay. So oh, there's right, ten right, right. people that are going in plus the hobo. Yeah. Okay. And hobo. I mean, I assume that the the um the Finnish tourists are are along for the ride as well. Oh, they they, they this is like this is exciting. They they did they and they, I don't know what we don't know what city where this is in. So if this is New York. They did all the, the, the sightseeing there. This is like mm-hmm. San Francisco. They looked at the Golden Gate Bridge. You know, I mean, we're not sure what town. I don't even know if this movie's going to tell us what city it is. It's not important. The, clearly, Dave in the maze is what's important here. And we got to get him out. I just kind of assumed it was Red Bank. New Jersey? Red Bank, New Jersey. <laughs> just out of, like, just, uh, yeah, I don't just, know. How many Red Banks are there? Yeah, Red Bank, New Jersey. Yeah, Red Bank. I don't know. Just, you know, it's kind of, you can see the, the, the way the light comes in through the windows. <laughs> Yeah. Give me a, a Jersey Shore kind of vibe. That's just you know. Have you I would eaten just, at, in my world? That's where. It have went. you eaten at Surf Taco? Because if I was a Finnish tourist, I would go to Surf Taco. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, oh, a, they have one taco is like six dollars. Like this is expensive, but it's it's huge. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and also, so I, we really should kind of dwell on this second ten because there is a lot going on. In addition to seeing the people, we get at least the the top of the maze and like all the different kind of things that are going into it. I like the paper towel roll. Like there's really, yes. there's a good message of like reusing and recycling and making do with whatever materials you have around. Like there's a, there's different boxes, different sizes, different things that are all working together. I into would, construction. Uh, here. I, I, I definitely, because of this, I definitely will have to check out this film because I want to know, I want, and also, I want to—I want to know if Rob Black really knows some of the people behind this film. I just kind of want to know, like, how it was the behind the scenes of like when they went to the warehouse recycling plant. We're like, we need all the boxes, all the duct tape, <laughs> all the shipping tape, duct tape boxes, tubes. Um, that looks like a vacuum hose we have here for yeah. for ventilation. Right. The craft of making that little smokestack there in the center. I love that. Can we, uh, real quick, can we skip to uh, the far, far future of Second Eleven? Ooh. Uh, Ooh. If you go to Second Eleven, it goes to the enter sign, and the enter is made out of cardboard. And it looks like it's, you know, the letters are hand cut out. Mm-hmm. And then, and for some reason, the middle of the uh, R at the end of enter is like still in the middle without really being attached. That's what it looks like to me. And then it's illuminated with a green light. And I think, I think, I think, um, I'll, I'll, I'll remind myself. Yeah, it, it looks like the yeah the lights kind of um, flickering. Yeah, so it's like it's definitely a nice little like either bulb or maybe even uh, maybe even it's one of those um, where it's like it's set up to change colors or something. I'm right. Keep an eye on yeah. That. If you skip ahead to um, to second eighteen, I think you get a better look at the enter sign, and it's definitely there's some illumination because you can kind of see it's it isn't just like oh maybe it's bright green paper that the letters are cut out of but yeah. you can see it's kind of leaking the light kind of leaks out from some of the cracks or the <laughs> the gaps in the in the cardboard that green glow it's yeah and it, it kind of goes back to um jay you were, you were talking about uh beetlejuice it's right. kind of like a the, the similar kind of green glow that the, i think it was like in the afterlife they had 
So I did I did no research um, <laughs> on this movie because I was told not did. to. Yeah. yeah, I was told not. To. Dave told me specifically, I, I, don't don't watch the movie, don't do any research, just watch the minutes and see what you like, right? So you could tell between the minutes that we watched, um, the the guy who made this movie loves movies. Yes, but the and then um, we just go into the first ent- entrance into the maze after after you know second twenty two. So. And I, I want to stress that, like, Annie is clearly going to be our main character for the, for the rest of this film. Because I mean, she's prepared. Like, she has this backpack on. And she it's like she she knows that Dave's lost in here and it's dangerous. You know, that's the mm-hmm. attitude she's going in with it. Everyone else seems like he's, like, excited. Like, it's like, as if it's a rainy day and, like, there's nothing better to do. Right. She's she's prepared with caution, as you should be. And everyone goes, yeah, let's go in. Like, yeah. it. All right. It's Saturday. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I get angry that, like, yeah, uh, Jane asked me to go to the maze. She says, no, I'm just trying to get Dave out. And then Greg's like, oh, you want a confirmation? Yeah, let's fucking do it. Like, no, Greg, like, like no one's, <laughs> like, no, this yeah. is not, this is not, oh, my God, he, ju- he just is high. Like, he's doing, like, the actor playing Greg knows I'm going to do everything that, everything that you hate if, like, your one friend who just, gets so like like liberal to the point of annoyance. I'm going to do that. I'm going to be I'm going to have the glasses, the hat, the 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 the, the annoying bright shirt, the tie, and I'm going to assert my opinion on a topic that I that I I shouldn't be. Yeah, he he's straight out of Fishtown. Oh yeah. my god, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, he in about 2 hours, he's getting the strongest IPA he can he can get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and so it's you know it's Greg, and then the uh, tourist, and then they cut to the homeless guy. He goes, yeah, I'll, "I'll be right here, guys." <laughs> that's that's my favorite part. Anything with him is my favorite part because he seems like the most sound person in this movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, you know, can I wonder? Going back to the kind of the the, the role and Annie is playing versus the the rest of our ensemble. Why do they think the camera crew is there? Like, do they think, oh, there's a camera crew, they're documenting this wonderful time, we're going to go into the maze, and it's going to be, you know, well, it's going to be a carnival, and it's going to be just wonderful, and, and these people are here to document it? I'm like, haven't, you know, have you guys, speaking, we, we were talking earlier about kind of the, the found footage genre, like, did you see Blair Witch Project? <laughs> Yeah. Like they went into the woods with cameras because bad stuff's going to happen. Like, why do you think the camera crew is there? I think that's, you know, that should give you a hint that what's coming is more any serious stuff than the fun adventure that, you know, that Jane and, and Greg want to get into. Yeah. Right. I'm, I am very glad though, that this filmmaker who made this knew that he wanted to have this camera crew in there, but was not going to make the movie that POV. Mm-hmm. Like there is going to be an actual professional camera. It's going to follow in and we're going to see if there's a camera crew. And once in a while we'll cut to that perspective to kind of get, you know, get Harry's point of view with his directing of the, of that. But yeah, it's not going to be a found footage film where we have to learn everybody through the camera. And like, no, there is a, you know, a disembodied third person camera. And it, it knows that Annie is our main character. It's not about the production. It's not going to be, Oh, what's the background of the, the cameraman, the the sound guy? Like, no, it's this is Annie trying to get to Dave in the maze. That's clearly what we the story is telling us. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And and so as we go into the maze, I I felt a definite shift in the mood, in the atmosphere, and it made me think of another uh, maze related movie. And I'll say so. I feel like previously up to this point with with all the people in the, you know, in the apartment and kind of the, the quirky conversation and, and Greg and Bryn with their cups and, you know, their, their coffee cups and everything. It, it gave me a very Wes Anderson type vibe, like a moon, moonrise kingdom type thing going on. Uh-huh. And once they go inside, like this transition, this minute, I feel like it made me think of Pan's Labyrinth. Yeah. Like we're, we're, we've, we've left the world of Wes Anderson and we're entering a world of Del Toro. Yeah. Cause it's, yeah. Cause it gives you this, it's, it's, it's a conflicting feeling of both wonderment, but also kind of just the unknown. Like mm-hmm. I'm not excited to be in this, 
uh, in this thing, I'm 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 very I'm very anxious because you know Dave's trapped in here, so I'm scared that we're going to get trapped in here. That's the vibe I get. I don't get a welcoming welcome to the uh, you know. It's not like there's a fun sign that says, "Hey, welcome to the maze." It's it definitely it gives this vibe of a tomb that you shouldn't be in. Right, and and Dave. Dave built the maze. Like Dave is inside the maze. Dave built the maze. Dave knows more about this maze than anyone else. And he's saying, don't come in. Yeah. Like, you know, maybe he knows what he's talking about and, and it doesn't sound like, Oh, I'm having so much fun. I want to keep it to myself. It's, you know, I, my creation has gotten out of control. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. You're safer out there, kind of thing. Yeah, I really wish Anne would have like done the classic, like brought in a rope, some kind of breadcrumbs to get out. Ooh, yes. Because you know she's got the backpack, but I'm like, no, you should, you should have tied it to the doorknob or something, you know, somewhere in the house, tied to somewhere that you know is a sturdy thing that you can pull on, and and just work your way back that way. Because, um, yeah, going in here, she doesn't know it. No one knows it. And then, and then they look. But they got in. We even see the friends. We don't even see where Greg and Bryn and and Jane, I believe, went. Like we don't right. know. They just right. ran off. It's like, well, screw it. I can't. I can't spend time looking for them too. Does time work the same way here? Oh my god! Yeah, that would yeah. be that would be creepy. Yeah, those finished tourists. It's like I don't know. They went in and we never saw them again. Like that's the vibe. Yeah, that's the vibe I get watching this. Yeah, because it, it you know. It, it's if time doesn't work the same. So you know, the first people walk walk in and they're like, "It's been hours." Like, did anybody follow us in afterwards? You know, but uh, when um, I can't, uh, what's his name? Uh, the guy with the beard. Oh, I can't uh, think of his name. Greg. Greg. No, Gordon. Greg. Gordon. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Gordon. Yeah, Gordon's, Gordon. Yeah, Gordon's Gordon, our Gordon buddy. Gordon walks in. He looks back. Gordon walks in. Looks back. He sees the camera crew. But when Annie walks in. She's in a, you know, or, well, no, sorry. When Gordon walks in, he sees the camera crew, but when he stands up, no one else is in the room with him. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah, because he, you know, according to Einstein's theory of relativity and the relationships between space and time, like there must be time dilation. Things happen just when, for the size to change, if you just think of it in terms of like a light wave move, you know, a, a beam of light moving from one end of the maze to the other, you know, it only takes a certain amount of time on the outside, but it's bigger on the inside. So it's going to take longer, but the speed of light is constant. So the time must be dilated as, as well as the space. Yeah. Things are going to get weird. This is, and, and I, and I was a little surprised watching this. Um, again, this is sort of a, a mystery project from from the the wonderful Robert Black, and we hadn't seen the whole movie while watching this minute fifteen, but we know it's minute fifteen of a feature length film. Like this is really early in the movie to be. Go I thought it was. It seemed a little bit early to getting into the maze, like that, and that in and of itself. And it's kind of, you know, it's kind of meta like stepping outside of the movie just looking at the structure of kind of like if you're watching a cop show if you're watching an hour-long drama and it's 15 minutes in and the cops have a suspect you're like well obviously it wasn't that guy yeah or it wasn't the way they thought because you got 45 minutes of show to cover like there's a lot of movie left and i think like i took that as a hint of just how much is in store for us i don't know what it is but i know there's going to be a lot of it left to go because Fifteen minutes in, we're already in this maze. Like, what the heck is happening next? Yeah. Well, back in minute twelve, they did thirty seconds of exposition. So maybe it's it's more about the maze <laughs> than the people. I mean, that's yeah. yeah no, I, I I can I can believe that. Yeah. Um, yeah. What world has uh, Dave uh, built down here that you know we're trying to explore? I don't think we're as a viewer, we're not trying to explore the people. We're trying to explore the maze with them. Right. That's almost like a, another character of the movie. Yeah. Is is the maze itself. Yeah. And then uh then the hobo. He's gonna go. I was just like he's going right yeah. to the fridge. Yeah. 
he's he's doing he's Dave P who we're speaking with uh that's that's him that's his character if 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 the three of us had to go into a maze I know for a fact Dave would go I'm gonna go get this bologna sandwich in here yeah like 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 I've I've already eaten Annie's peanut butter and jelly uh Annie ordered a pizza I've already eaten that I'm gonna see if there's like something else in here because these two freeloaders over here are drinking coffee eating the pizza they didn't throw in for and uh you know I'm gonna stay out of the maze yeah they can get away with it I can get away with it but, uh, uh, yeah, that's, um, that's, that's my notes for the minute. So, so yeah, Jay, tell, tell, uh, tell the listeners when, uh, they're not trapped in a time, time bending maze. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Just a, w- one last thing I want to point sure, out sure. before we start wrapping up, like this will be quick. All right. Um, I just wanted to, to one, and we, we saw it a little bit earlier. I don't know if, if it got mentioned in, in other minutes, but I want to make sure we point out just going back to, and this ties into what Jay said about whoever did this. You know, obviously, likes has seen a lot of movies, a fan of movies and, and films and stuff. Um, if we go back to second eight, that scene where we get the great shot of the hobo, we see in in the background on the wall they've got film reels, yes, as decoration up on the wall. So I think that just just kind of another piece of of evidence, if you will, about you know that this is the movies about movies. You know, mm-hmm. kind of the the maze. You know, is the maze a metaphor for the movie making process? I don't know, but there is a lot of movie stuff that goes into this this movie kind of thing. So I just wanted to. to, to I I had forgotten to mention it back at at second eight. So just wanted to toss yeah. that. in. No, 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 you're right though. It's there is there is some tchotchkes I've seen around the apartment. I was gonna I was gonna mention it uh, later, but no, you're right. Um, because like right next to the the hobo in the kitchen is that old Tommy phone booth. You know, that's clearly yeah, a prop. Old... It's not real. Yeah. Um so yeah. there's definitely there's definitely old timey gadgets is definitely a thing that the people of this apartment like. They like these this 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 appreciation of of uh of where we've been kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Technology. Yes, an homage to old Hollywood. Yes. Um and and uh childhood of making a cardboard maze. Definitely, yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's, yeah, good nostalgia. Uh, yeah, so Jed, please tell us. Uh, uh, so you can catch me over at Whole Wheat Costa. That's Whole Wheat, C-O-S-T-A. It's a podcast. Uh, catch me on iTunes. Uh, we were on a hiatus, but I'm going to start posting up the uh, middle of October again. Uh, hope you come uh, listen. All right. Dave? That, that's great. And, and yeah, Dave, where can folks hear more from you? Yeah, they can, uh, they can find me over at uh, five minutes of mystery dot com. Uh, I talk about mystery men and how uh, in the day of superhero films, uh, one movie made me laugh way, way before the Spider-Man's and X-Men's. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that was that was a, it's a great movie, a great podcast. You can listen to uh, to my minutes on there as well. Uh, you can also hear Dave and I on uh, Groundhog Minute at groundhogminute.com where we talk about the movie Groundhog Day. Um, I was also I also talked about the movie This is Spinal Tap with a, a great host, um, Heidi Bennett, and you can find that at spinaltapminute.com. I also do a weekly podcast, uh, Five Minutes of Mime. Um, but you can find all that, all my, uh, all my hosting shows and guest spots and everything else at catandshawn.org. That's kind of like my home base of, of podcast links. And then... Uh, yeah, and then mystery movie maze thing. You can find that someplace. Wherever you found this, you found 15 of them so far. <laughs> Keep finding them there. I'm sure there's going to be plenty more to come at, uh, at Dave Made a Maze. <laughs> Dave Made a Maze. Right. Dave Made a Maze. And, uh, Thanks. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Me, at least. <laughs> we will see you around the cardboard corner. And then I could probably disarm all the traps, and then we can... We can finish this maze! Who is with That was Sean me? German and Dave Palace of Groundhog Minute, along with James Costa of Whole Week Costa, taking a minute 15 of Dave Made a Maze. They will be back in minute 22. Next time, on Dave Made a Minute, we've got Ben Butina of Department 12, an IO Psychology podcast, taking on minute 16. Thank you for listening to Dave Made a Minute. Intro dialogue snippets were taken from Dave Made a Maze, directed by Bill Watterson, written by Bill Watterson and Steve Sears, and produced by John Charles Meyer. Intro music is Diversion by The Equals, featured in the film Dave Made a Maze, and Life Cycle of a Match by Parvis Decree. Outro music is Leaving This Godforsaken Place and Her Presence is Strong Here by Parvis Decree. Dave Made a Minute is a production of Lemming Drop Studio and all other featured podcast producers. 
You can find more content at lemmingdrops.com. Check us out on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Dave Made a Minute. If you like what you hear, throw us a rating and review on your podcatcher of choice. And check out all of the participants' other shows to spread the love around. Again, thank you for listening. As long as we're all working together, this is going to be fine. It's going to be great. I need you to notify the families of everyone who died here today. Totally. Wait, what? <laughs>